really something, wasn't it? A superb singing talent and surely one to watch in the future. As I leave you in the morning, you have to say, Fantastic, Gina, really fab. Thanks, Terry. What would you pay for? Huh? Cheers. Who's it? I don't know. Any danger of being served, Mary? Mr. Greengrass, I've got a small one to show you. I hope it's made of glass and it's got a large scotch in it. Well, no, no, it's this letter I got this morning. Uh, I'll have a look at it in a minute. Come, come on, Mary, did you extract them, look? Have only one pair of hands, Claude. Yeah, two, I'd let you nip me a pullover. But if I, if I don't get a drink soon, I'll take my valuable custom elsewhere. Is that a threat or a promise? Well, I want your opinion, Oscar. I'll ask for it. As a matter of fact, I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, ah, once well, this is your postman coming round my house, sticking a note through my door, saying that the parcel for me, if I wanted to, I've got to come and fetch it. Well, it might have something to do with the fact that your parcel was too big to fit through your letterbox. Thank you, Mary. There's me thinking you'd left the country. Got nothing smaller, I suppose. You put it on the slate, if you like. <laughs> Fine, David, what's this letter you're talking about? Well, I think I've won some money, Mr Greengrass. Have we? Know you've got any premium buns, David? Oh, it's one my mum gave us for my birthday. I mean, to be honest, I've forgotten I had it. Hundred pounds, a lot of money, you know. I mean, you be a bit careful. You get somebody a bit unscrupulous to try and have it off you. Like who? Like me for a start. Oops, uh, two pints of your best when you're ready, please. Where's our lovely landlady tonight? Out on a gig with her new manager, Terry. Oh, I take it you like him then. He's not the sort of company I'd have picked out for her, any more than any of the others she's mixing with over there. Ah, uh, over where? This new club they've opened in Whitby, the Blue Parrot. Hmm? A bit like that, is it? From what I've heard, it's not the sort of place you take your maiden aunt. Yeah? Must be one we missed, eh, Mike? <laughs> Rory Shaw. Pleased to meet you. So, some more of the palladium, eh, <laughs> Let's not go mad, eh? Yeah, you've got a great voice there, love. And everything that goes with it. So tell me, Rory, you're always this shine retiring, but we just caught you on a bad night. If I just won a hundred quid, I'd book myself a cruise. 
Oh, I don't want to get seasick. Put yourself into the poshest hotel in London and live the high life for a week. <laughs> well, no, I couldn't do it. I'll get all my some thoughts mixed up. If you got any sense, you'll put it in the post office. I'm done, Miss Shire. I'm just trying to give the lad some sensible advice, which is more than he'll get from you. Oh, no, I already know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, yeah? Well, what would that be, then? Oh, you'll see. They seek him here. They seek him there. His clothes are loud, but never swell. It will make or break him, so he's got to buy the best. Cause he's a dedicated follower of fashion. I'll come for that package. Right. It'll cost you threepence. What for? Well, that's why it wasn't left. There's postage due. Well, 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 what is it? Well, if you give me the money, you'll find out, won't you? Uh, here's your flaming threepence. And there's your flaming parcel. Hello. It's David, isn't it, David Stockwell? Uh, hi. You surely remember me. Martin Featherstone. I was a friend of your late father's. Oh, yes. Well, Mr. Uh, Martin Feather... What can we do you for? Well, I've had a bit of a windfall. Really? So, they didn't actually get away with anything, then? They were disturbed by a couple of our lads coming off shift. Did they manage to uh, get a look at them? A couple of teenage lads, I reckon. What exactly is uh, kept in the shed, Mr. Farman? Detonators. Stuff we put out in the track when it gets foggy. Sounds dangerous. They can be, in the wrong hands. Good of you to join us. Sorry. Must have been the early hours, though, when I got to bed. It was two o'clock when I did. They've asked me again for tonight. Oh, have they? Look, it's only for a couple of weeks till the regular singer's had a baby. And like Terry says, it could lead to bigger things. Terry said that, did he? I don't know why you don't like him. He's all right once you get to know him. It's just a bit flash, that's all. Certainly that. So how did it go? I went down a bomb and I got chatted up by this dead dishy fella. Look at you. I spent the night matching wits with Claude Jeremiah Greengrass. <laughs> what are you going to do with the rest of your money then, David? Well, I thought I might put it in the post office. Or I could go on one of those luxury cruises. Or well, then I, I might go and stay in, in one of them posh hotels in London. The thing you've got to realise about money, David, is pound notes are a bit like rabbits. Rabbits? Put them together in the right place and they're inclined to increase and multiply. Investment, that's the key, David. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I might be able to help you there. No. Detonators, eh? Cheaper than buying fireworks, I suppose. And just as capable of blowing one of your hands off, if you aren't careful. I suppose so. Those railway yards are part of Ventress's beat, weren't they? Hello again. Oh, hello. Miss you? She's in the kitchen having coffee. Ta. Guess who? Terry! You frightened the life out of me. How's my favourite star keeping this morning? 
not doing a lot of twinkling, to be honest. It's all these late nights you're keeping. Yep, well, that's what my Auntie Mary reckons. I don't think your Auntie Mary likes me. Yeah, well, she probably thinks you're after me, body. Yeah, well, there's no rule says you can't mix a bit of business with pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple more documents for you to sign, and then that's it. Do you want me to sign them now? No, not really. Just as long as you let me have them back in the next couple of weeks. How are you feeling now? Oh, I'll survive. People seem to. Come on, get your coat on. Why? I'll buy you a drink. No, I don't think so. Thanks, Jackie. But Maggie, do you really think this is what Neil would have wanted? For you to stay in on your own night after night? Come on, please. It'll be easier than you think. Please? So you're saying you never saw or heard anything over at those yards last night? No, Tad. Can you explain that? Well, maybe the kids made their move right after I left. And maybe we wouldn't spoon-feed our young criminals if we did our jobs properly. I want those premises patrolled thoroughly tonight. Is that clear? Right, Sash. Hello, Maggie. It's, um, good to see you. Thanks. How are you? Oh, uh, people do keep asking me that because they're concerned. Of course they are. We all are. So, um, what's it going to be? I'll get them. No, you won't. They're on the house. Um, I'll have a fruit juice, thanks, Mary. Don't go mad just because it's free. <laughs> Glad to see you back, love. It goes for all of us. What do you think? Go get him, kid. Yeah, have a big spin our wisdom plan. All right, love. Go on. Knock him dead. Okay, people, next up, we've got an ass who's only performed there once before. Right, the seat takes. a little bit nervous, but there's really no need, because she's going to be a big star in the future. So let's have a warm welcome for Miss Gina Ward! Sorry to interrupt your evening. If you'll all stay exactly where you are, please, this won't take very long. Unless any of you have anything on you. You shouldn't have, of course. When you walk through a 
You admit that this is your bag, Miss Ward? Well, yeah, it is. But I don't know how they got in it. I've never seen that bottle before. Of course you haven't. Mike, I wouldn't take drugs. OK, come on, Gina, sit down. We'll be all right. But they don't believe me. I, I know, I haven't. Let's just run through it one more time from the top. Where were you when the CRD arrived? I was on stage. And where was your bag? It was back on the table. You left your bag unattended on a table in a crowded club? Look, I was keeping an eye on it, OK? Only when the police arrived, all hell broke loose. So anyone could have got at it? Well, in the confusion, yeah. Including you, presumably? Well, yeah. But why would I do that? To Gina, as far as I'm concerned, we're going places. OK. Um, uh, was there anyone else at the table? There was this bloke Rory something over there. Sure. What was he, a friend of yours or something? Well, no, I've, I've just seen him in there a couple of times. How was it left with the police in Whitby? Well, they're waiting for the pills to be analysed before they can take the next step. What do you think? I think she needs a good lawyer. Jackie Lambert. Oh, hi, Mike. Gina? Well, what happened? Blaketon! I want a word with you. Another one? Yeah. All that package you charged me threepence for had in it were this. A gardening catalogue. Oh, I didn't realise you were horticulturally inclined. I'm not. And I didn't even order it. You, you must you must have known what were in the package. I'm not in the habit of steaming open other people's mail, Greengrass. And even if I had, it would still cost you threepence. So don't come in here asking for a refund. I know better than to ask, don't I? But on page 73, it tells you how to build a wishing well. Why don't you follow the instructions and when it's finished, chuck yourself down it. And don't bother about making a wish. I'll be taking care of that. Ashfordly, please. Phil. Oh. Listen, 
if Craddock wonders where I am, tell him that I went straight home after I finished my shift. Will you? Right. And if Mrs. Ventress rings, tell her that I've been unavoidably detained at the station on a very important case. Where exactly are you? Where? What do you think? It's certainly eye-catching. Thanks. <gasps> Who'd you lose the bet to? Don't you like it? You look like a pair of curtains. <laughs> Pull yourself together. <laughs> I think it's lovely, David. I think you look really with it. If that's with it, I think I'd rather be without it. Is that what you've been wasting your money on? Oh, some of it, yeah. What about the rest? Oh, that's all invested. Oh, and by this time next month, I will have doubled that money. And pigs and white. Oh, well, you, you come outside now. I'll show you what I've bought. I think you'll be surprised. I bet I'll be disappointed. No sign of Ventress, by the way. Uh, he went straight home, Sarge. Whoever had to go with the storage sheds at the railway yards the other night had another bite last night. This time, cleaned it out. Dear. Yeah. Crew. Tickets, <laughs> please. So your story is that you'd never seen these pills before? It's no story, Jackie. It's the truth. Well, so how did they come to be in your handbag? Because well, someone must have stuck them in there. Well, like who, for instance? Well, like anyone, I suppose, who wanted to get shot before the police found drugs on them. Have you ever taken drugs, Gina? No. So you're insisting on pleading not guilty? Of course I am, because I'm not guilty. I mean, whose side are you on? Look, if I wasn't on yours, I wouldn't be here now, would I? If you think this is tough, it's nothing to the sort of grilling you're going to get when the prosecution get to work on you. Do you mean, so you, you spent all the money on me? Right, you know, Mr Featherston what put me on to them, you see. They're all from this mate of his who's had to get shot because his business has gone bust. Who's Mr Featherston? Well, you know, these are a real bargain, he said. Did he? Well, if there's such a bargain, why didn't he snap them up for himself? Ah, oh, well, you see, he's a bit short of cash at the moment. Not anymore, he's not. Not since he's seen you come in. I mean, I mean, I mean where, where are you going to get rid of them? Oh, well, that's where you come in, Mr Greengrass. Me? To advise me. You've left it a bit late, haven't you, David? I mean, I, I mean, I, have you seen this? Look! I mean, look at that! I mean, look, look! I, I mean, the second... Look at that! The seconds! Look at that! Look at this! You've been done, David, well and truly. How many times have I told you, if you're going to let somebody rip you off, why not let me do it? Because I just wanted to do one thing for myself, that's why. And I've gone and messed it up, haven't I? David, watch me, Ed. So, what do you think? Well, I certainly don't think she's guilty. Do you? <laughs> no, not for a minute. So what next? Well, I'll, uh, I'll ride down to Whitby and find out just what the score is with the CID. Thanks for the recommendation, by the way. Well, having been on the receiving end of your courtroom manner myself, you were the first person I thought of. Well, did you inspect the jackets before you bought them? Well, yeah. And? Well, they look all right to me. Well, in that case, he's not broken any law. He quoted you a price, you inspected the goods, and you were both willing parties to the deal. The, the, the seconds, all the, the, they're falling apart. Any fool could see that. Well, that's why he was letting him go cut price. I'm sorry, Claude. Just can't help you. But... Save your breath, David. They're not interested unless you're a motorist with a dodgy lamp. Come on. Ashfordley Police. 
Mrs. Ventress, I was just... Right. Well, the... Well, he's got tied up on this big case, you see. Right. Well, I expect him when you see him, really. Well, it's in connection with Gina Ward. You, uh, you nicked her for possession of drugs at the Blue Parrot last night. So? Uh, well, I was, I was wondering if you'd be charging. Well, we're still waiting for the lab report on the pills, but that's just the formality, of course. One way or another, it just wasn't her night. How do you mean? Well, she was the only one in the entire club with any stuff on her. So what's your interest in her? Well, she happens to be the landlady of my local. And I don't believe for a minute that she'd be involved with drugs. All we can go on are the facts as we find them, Constable Bradley. Look, there were two other people at the table where she left her bag. One was her manager, Terry Connolly, and the other was another bloke. Um, what's his name? Uh, Rory Shaw. That's right. So? Well, we checked Connolly out. He's got a bit of form back in Liverpool, but nothing very serious or recent. Certainly nothing involving drugs. What about the other bloke, Rory Shaw? Nobody we talk to down the club seems to know Rory Shaw. Oh, come on. That, that, that's suspicious in itself, isn't it? Not necessarily. After all, she only met the bloke twice. In a noisy nightclub. She could have got the name wrong. And even if she hadn't, there's no way of proving he planted drugs. Look, Bradley, I can understand you putting a good word in for her. But at the end of the day, this is a CID case. <laughs> right. Well, uh... Thanks very much for your help. You're welcome. Oh, hello, Alf. Come in. Uh, I was wondering if you'd do me a favour. Uh, now, you're, you're certain you weren't mistaken about the name? I'm positive, Mike, and so is Terry. But what's going on? Uh, I don't know exactly. Listen, um, are you free tonight? Tonight and every night, after last night. Well, well, the Invisible Man returns. Petrus, what's all this? Well, it happened during the night, Sarge. Down at the railway station. Well, uh, I'd only just got there. Everything seemed to be in order and... Uh, all of a sudden, I heard this noise. Yes. So I I set off running. Only with it being so dark, I uh, I fell off the edge of the platform. Good grief! Well, when I got to my feet, I realised. Uh, obviously, done my shoulder in. Well, you're lucky you didn't break your neck, really. What? Well, right. Uh, so I uh, made my way to the hospital. Why didn't you let us know? You mean to say that Mrs Ventress didn't ring? Oh, I certainly asked her to. Uh, well, if she was that upset, uh, understandable, you know. Oh, yes, there's a point. So, is the shoulder broken? It's just badly bruised, Sarge. But I wanted you to know that I'm perfectly happy to come in here, if only to answer the phone. Well, that's very noble of you, Ventress. So, uh, see you in the morning, eh, Sarge? Right. You know, Alf, just occasionally, you still manage to amaze me. So, if we see him in there, what do we do? Just point him out to me. Surely there'll be no need for that. There he is, Mike. Are you sure it was DC Thomason you saw? No doubt about it. Well, so what's going on? I don't know. And I can hardly go back and ask, can I? But then, you could. How much longer is this going to go on, Alf? I 
can't suddenly make a miraculous recovery. Uh, morning, Sarge. Morning, Ventress. How's the arm? Well, I can't pretend I've had a good night's sleep. But uh, into every life, eh, Sarge? Uh, wouldn't mind, would you? Oh, of course not. Anything else I can help you with? The odd grape peeling, perhaps? Wouldn't mind a nice cup of tea. You think he recognised you? Found a half gov. Then again, there's no reason to believe that he'd have recognised Rory. No, but Gina Ward did. Well, perhaps not the brightest idea you've had this week. Tell him, Bradley, that nobody would ever heard of Rory Shaw. Oh, come on, sir. How was I supposed to know he'd carry on sniffing round? Besides, it could have been a coincidence, them being outside the club. I don't believe in coincidences. On principle. I, I, I don't know what you're going to do with it all, David, but you, you can't leave it here. There must be somebody who can help us. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Like who? Well, like Mr Blaketon. Blaketon? You'll go and see him over my inert torso. Look, I've lost all my money. All right, well, you, you can go and have a word with me if you like. I can't do that. Why not? You've got a tongue in your head, haven't you? Well, yes, I have, but if I go and see someone like Blake till it gets all tied up. You're not fit to be let out on your own, you know that. Yes, I do. Well, that's why I need your help, Mr Greengrass. I was looking for Detective Constable Thomason. Uh, he's uh, had to nip out. Can I help you? I'm D.I. Haggerty. He works for me. Jackie Lambert. I'm acting for Gina Ward. I am aware of who you are, Miss Lambert. So, are you charging her? Too early to say yet. But the likelihood is that you will be. Too early to say. I'm absolutely convinced that she's been framed. <laughs> and do you have any evidence to support that theory, Miss Lambert, or is it simply female intuition? Does the name Rory Shaw mean anything to you, Inspector? I gather he's certainly known to DC Thomason. Are you suggesting that there's any significance in that? Oh, come on now, Inspector. I think we're both well aware of its significance, aren't we? Well, that'd be all, Miss Lambert. I am rather busy. I think that'll do for the moment. Thanks. But if and when DC Thomason does surface, you might tell him I'd still like a word with him. Otherwise, I'll see you both in court. And Rory Shaw, perhaps. Who else knows about our connection with Rory Shaw? Apart from the whole of the North Riding. Get me Ashfordley. Oh, thank you, Mary. Come. We want a word. What sort of a word? Well, uh, we need your advice, Mr. Blayton. Against my better judgment. David thinks he needs your advice. All right, David. I'm all ears. Oh, go on, you ask him. I am familiar with the case, yes, sir. Though I must say I wasn't aware that one of my own constables was involved in himself personally with it. Come on, son, come on, come on, come on. Come on. What do you reckon, then, Mr. Blaketon? Well, I think PC Bellum is right. You don't have a leg to stand on. So, so he can be done out of his money, and there's no you can do about it. I never said that, Greengrass. Right, David. What was the name of this uh, so-called friend of your father's? It was Mr. Featherston. Ah. Does he have a first name? Oh, it's Martin. Martin Featherston. Is he in his uh, late forties, early fifties? Well, what do you think? It's no good asking me, is it? How old did he look? About 48. We'll say yes, then. Yes, then. Hello, Sarge. I'd like a word, Bradley, if you've got a minute. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Rory Shaw was an informer. Well, why didn't someone tell me about that? 
CID don't generally make a habit of sharing that kind of information with humble constables. More importantly, it isn't as simple as that. Well, how do you mean? According to Inspector Haggerty, they've suspected for some time that Shaw was playing both ends against the middle. Providing Thomason with the odd tidbit, but up to his neck in the drug racket himself. That raid the other night was in fact a setup to confirm their suspicions of him. Oh. By tipping off Shaw in advance that the raid was going to take place. See, they knew already the drugs were changing hands there every night of the week. If they raided it and found the place clean, that'd be proof positive that Shaw was unreliable, wouldn't it? Since he knew about the raid and warned everybody. Everybody, that is, except for the unfortunate Gina Ward. Well, if that's true, then that suggests that the drugs found on Gina were hers after all. I'm afraid so. Classic case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, I suppose. Well, no, no I'm, I'm sorry, Sarge. No, I, I just don't believe that about Gina. What if it was a cover-up? A cover-up? By Thomason and Haggerty, because they're in the racket. I'm going to pretend I never heard that remark, Bradley. In words of one syllable, keep out. And it goes without saying that what you've heard here is entirely confidential. Good grief. What happened to you? Well, which version do you want? The real version or the expurgated one? Both corkers. Jay, no, not. She's just burbling again. What can we do for you, Oscar? Well, I was just wondering whether the name Martin Featherston meant anything to you. It does, yes. Aye. I had a feeling it might. Anything you know. Uh, so I gather. Well, is that a good sign or a bad sign? Gina, I I really don't know. Well, I'm innocent, Mike. Yeah, look, I believe you. Look, we've done everything we can. It, it look, it's just a question of waiting now. How long's it gonna take? Hey. Watch the police, Sergeant Craddock speaking. Which railway station? Yes, station master. How may I help you? We've just closed. Oh, I'm sure this won't take long, Mr. Featherston. Have we met? We have now. How can I help you? We've got a business proposition for you. Oh, yes. Uh, you see, we, we've got these jackets, you see. They're, 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 they're what they call seconds. Well, to tell you the honest truth, they're, they're a right load of rubbish, but we, we thought you might like to buy them. Is this some sort of joke? No, I don't think so. We don't seem to be laughing. But you were, weren't you? When you sold them to David Stockwell yesterday. Oh, I see. Friends of his, are you? Oh, yeah, we're very friendly people. Unless somebody tries to get them on the wrong side of us. Do you uh, manage this place, Mr. Featherston? Yes. And your employers, are they aware of your criminal past? My what? You know, the times you've been done for shoplifting and fraud. I do know you, don't I? You used to be a copper. I've felt more collars than you've had hot dinners. Well, he's not even worked in the gentleman's outfit. Has... Bellamy, can I have a word? Yes, Sarge. Bellamy. Ventress. He's not any kind of trouble, is he? Apart from the injured shoulder, that is. Trouble? Uh, how do you mean, Sarge? Oh, I don't know. Not any financial difficulties or anything? No, I don't think so. Everything all right at home, is it? With Mrs. Ventress? Well, that's all, Bellamy. Thank you. Sarge. Shut the door, will you? Don't worry, love. Something will turn up. But what if it doesn't? <sighs> Look, it's no good, Auntie Mary. If the police won't do anything, I'm going to have to do it myself. Do what exactly? Find Rory Shaw, that's what. 
And when I find him, tell him exactly what I think of him. Because it's got to be him who stuck them drugs in me bag. It's got to be. What happened then? Right, David, there's your money, and I want to see you first thing in the morning in my post office with all of that. Oh, you want Mr. Blayton? I'll be there. In the meantime, you can buy me a large scotch. A very large scotch. Gina, I think she might be about to do something rather dangerous. Oh. Hello, hello, hello. The gang's all here, eh? I'm right on cue. I don't believe it. You'd better not mess this up. Come on. <sighs> Gina, what are you doing here? Sticking up for myself, which is more than you're all prepared to do. Gina, have you any idea the sort of people you're dealing with here? Oh, and what am I supposed to do? Nothing. Just sit around, let myself be crucified for something I didn't do. Oh, well, well. If it isn't the man who never was... Gina, no. Let go of me, Mike. No, because like Jackie just told you, you don't know what you're getting yourself into here. If you don't let go of me, I'll scream the place down. What do you think? Aye. Not bad. The door! Sarge. No sling this morning? Oh, feeling a lot better, Sarge. Give it another week, it'll be as good as new. So long as I carry on taking it easy, that is. That is good news. Your friend over at Crew Station will be pleased. Crew Station, Sarge. Station Master there. He rang yesterday to find out how your investigation was going. My investigation, Sarge? The one that took you over there one morning this week. Only one thing puzzles your friend, see. When he put you on the first train back, he was firmly under the impression that you were sound of wind and limb. Now, how do you account for that, then, Ventress? I believe Jean has got some news for me. Oh, yes. 
She's in her room if you want to go or not. Thanks. Terry. Hello, Mike. Where's Gina? In the clear, I'm happy to say. Really? That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad you think so. But can I warn you that anything you say may be taken down in writing and used in evidence? <laughs> what? You planted those bombers on Gina, didn't you? You must be joking. Me? Never. Now, you see, I've never believed it was Gina those drugs belonged to. <laughs> Why would she take the trouble to wipe her fingerprints off the bottle but then leave them in her bag? Well, there were no dabs of mine on that bottle. There were no dabs of anybody's on it, Terry. But it's, it's not the bottle we're talking about here, Terry. We're talking about the pills themselves. What do you mean, the pills? The coating on black bombers, Terry. Perfect for fingerprints. So we had a set of yours sent up from Liverpool this morning. Taken after a youthful indiscretion of yours some years ago. Look, kid. I... When I saw the uniforms, I just panicked. But still found time to wipe the bottle clean. Who needs enemies, eh, Terry? So tell me this, Constable, since you're so clever. What's that? How come Thomson and Haggerty didn't find fingerprints on the bombers? <sighs> Which fingerprints would those be, then? I can see I'm going to have to watch you very carefully. You'd better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> 